Welcome back, riders and fans. We're going to do a little couch racing. That's what I'm going to call it until I come up with a better name for it. We're going to leave the commentating to the professionals like Jason Wigan and Stuart because I think Stuart did a, a fabulous job, much better than his counterpart, RC. <laughs> uh, so anyway... <laughs> Small little joke there, but uh, I'm probably going to be like a turkey in a hurricane here. It's going to be fairly unfiltered, and we're just going to give it a go. And I know that MX Sports needs the viewership, so we're going to just try not to get a copyright strike and just watch some good-ass racing. And there's been a Mav TV and Flow Motorsports. It's kind of been a disaster, so I, I, I think everyone on YouTube and stuff is just bringing more viewers to the racing action so you know you're welcome davy coombs at epic sports let's watch some of the racing that determines the finale for motocross into one of the most fantastic motocross of nations here with the two biggest rivals when you have chase sexton on the honda dude's built like a brick He's like, what, nine feet tall at this point? You know, got to be 225. He's got to weigh more than that motorcycle. You know, I'm digressing. I don't think he weighs more, more than <laughs> than the Honda motorcycle, but he does. He looks like a, a, a brick house for sure. The way he rides, he's incredibly fluid on the bike. He looks a little stiff, but he doesn't look as stiff as, say, somebody like his, to his teammate, Kenny Roxon because his teammate ever since his injury seems like he just doesn't flow as well and maybe that has something to do with his moto finishes and I thought that he was going to do better this season you know he started off strong but then kind of faded and you know this is an incredibly hard sport to maintain a level of performance because these guys do what they do 12 uh, motos 12, uh, they do 12 races, 12 races, 24 motos, and that's after 17 races of Supercross with all the qualifying, all the riding in between, not to mention all the traveling. Uh, so, again, we'll, we'll just get back into the, the racing action here, and <laughs> I'll, I'll kind of shut up a little bit because <laughs> God knows that I could talk. Is that right? <laughs> uh, but... Anderson, I've heard rumors of Anderson not gelling with the Cowie. And why is that a problem? Well, because Anderson was kind of one of the favorites to potentially take this from, you know, Ferrandez and Tomac coming into the 2022 season because he had such a fabulous motocross season or supercross season for that matter and, and truthfully he's had an amazing motocross season as well he's he's been on the podium multiple times and, and didn't he even win a race what race did he win uh, i'm just gonna look it up real quick no matter what he can't be too conservative yeah, he won a moto at Hangtown. Yeah, yeah, he did. Was that the only moto he won? Yep, that was the only moto that he won was round three, first moto of Hangtown. Oh, yeah, Sexton. Dude, just... he. Ah, I really think what happened there was it was body weight. He needed to transition his weight, and he they were having the front wheel come out of the rut, and... It just it caught him off guard, and there's not enough time to transition to the other side. And I, I do think that he was thinking four corners ahead because if we see it here on the replay, watch his front wheel, comes out of the rut, boom. And that rear end couldn't get back, so the back end was rebounding, and he couldn't get the body weight correct, and it went. And I do think he was probably thinking like five corners ahead to what was going on with Craig and Anderson, knowing that he had to get a, around them. I have honestly was surprised that Moto won, that they didn't actually have any contact. You know, him and Tomac didn't hit each other at all. I do think that there is one position on the track that would have been a good place to actually brake check. I mean, when was the last time we saw anybody brake check anybody? It was, <laughs> was this Emic and McGrath way back when? You know, and... and I've been incredibly impressed with Bloss as well, with not on a factory bike, 
Uh, these factory Yamahas, they just seem to squirt. I don't know if it's just Tomac riding the bike with him clutching it a bunch. They're, it, digressing here a little bit, but it, there doesn't look like there's a whole lot of fans at, you know, 200 degree weather, right? <laughs> uh, they all got their canopies. And I mean, I guess you could potentially maybe say that, hey, why did they cut the motos? Was it for the riders? Of, of course it was for the riders, but also it has to be for kind of helping the fans too. Um, Sexton, he's in his head, you know, knowing he's in panic mode. So he front wheel pops the, the berm there and he just simple goes down. Uh, again, this track looks like you, you can't push. You absolutely can't push this track because when you're pushing really hard, you're going to make mistakes. You're going to pop in and out of ruts, and these guys, they don't move. The ruts do not move with how hard and basically it's like it, it's brick out there. It's cement. That stuff gets hardened by the sun, and it won't budge. It won't move at all. You pick a rut, and you better freaking hope that you kind of just stay in it. And you'll see the guys' body languages from here. Like, watch Tomac here. He's going to have the outside in. Boom. And then, you know, wait the outside peg on that next corner, where if you really had traction, the guys would be more centered with the the bike. They'd be more middle on the, the motorcycle. And I'm... This this season honestly has been really fun to to watch because normally it almost looks like Anderson there was off the track. I mean, he almost looked like that might have been something where you could potentially, you know, protest him because he was almost off the banners. But if they show a replay of it, I, I don't think he is, but it was close because, you know, it almost looked like a straightaway right there. It was it was definitely a clean pass for sure. And the suspension on these guys, it, it would be interesting to talk to some of the suspension the techs, you know, or I don't know what they would call them out there, but the their suspension gurus, right, is where would they have the setup here? Would they have the setup softer because of how much just hard rocky it is? Or would they honestly want to go a little bit stiffer because of how holy and just sharp all this stuff is and fast because typically when it's fast you don't want that bike kicking back to back so you're going to want it to be a little bit stiffer here. And Dungey, I, I guess I've been hearing stuff that Dungey says that he's going to retire again. However, I still feel like it would be smart for Roger to keep Dungey on the KTM because I think Webb is wanting to move away from KTM unless they sign something like Sexton because then that would definitely keep uh, Dungey's job away if they picked up somebody like Sexton. Watch how these guys ride so much on their heels nowadays, and you can also see how much these guys are actually standing up a bunch. I want to say that Tomac has kind of been the, you know, ironically, because Bub is the one commenting right now, is the rider that has sort of transitioned everybody to keeping the feet on the pegs. And, and I almost think that that might have been by accident because doesn't this guy still have like a torn ACL, you know, from Supercross? Oh, see, there's one of the hard ruts there to where if, you know, that's what happened to Dungey. If the track was not as cement-like, just hard pack, you know, it was, it was a little bit more wet than he would have been able to just push through that. This track looks like a nightmare to ride, especially in the heat. Truthfully, the whole heat thing is if they would have cut the races by <laughs> literally not quite in half, but 15 minutes, I felt that would have been really helped the riders for 15. But two laps was just, it almost seems kind of like a PR stunt. I know that you want to keep the riders safe, and this is why I'm never going to be you know, one of the voices or you know, I would say at the main level is because I am unfiltered. That was a nice pass by Sexton, just pure inside. He's got a nice triple line through here, but it's typically the line is just that double-double single. And, you know, because watch Barsha here, just stand up all the way until the apex, and then he sits down and goes. And that uphill just looks incredibly rough, where you have to be light on the pegs, and, you know, especially on an uphill, you're... You need to squeeze hard. See, right there, Sexton, he was pushing the motorcycle too hard and trying to race down that downhill and ended up kind of having to stop himself. If he wasn't as strong of a rider, he would have tipped over right there, but he was able to correct and just kind of stop his momentum there. Again, 
I definitely think that Sexton is in complete panic moment at one of these, especially this race, because this is a dude that has normally been, again, ironically, I'm going to compare him to Stewart. When he's out front, like at least in Supercrosses, he's the guy that takes himself out. You know, there was at least two Supercrosses this year. I'd have to look back where he was the guy that was going to win the race, and then he takes his ass out. How many times has that happened with Stewart? During this section right there, you can see those guys hop a little bit. During the first moto, they were able to turn it into a couple double-doubles, which I was going to probably make a video about this week, about, uh, or at least next week, about how that's just one of the creative lines there. But uh, it would be interesting to, to see what these riders are running in their ECUs. Are they running the, the traction control setting? What I mean by that is, are they retarding the timing of it because of it being so slippery? You know, but then you've got a rider like Tomac where he's just clutching the crap out of the motorcycle and able to, even Sexton, you know, he looks like he is, he is charging forward and that bike looks like it's squirting. It doesn't look like it's delayed whatsoever. Yeah, good recovery by Chase and... You know, but like this section looks like a waste. It's so one line. Okay, the drone just completely moves it. A lot of this track looks one line. I do get them trying to, to change up the track here from having Fox Raceway 1. That was a, a good outside line, keeping up a, a lot of momentum. I doubt he was even using the brakes whatsoever there. And then he's got another outside line here, trying to stay away from the the holes and he's outside watch see what he did as opposed to try to see bounce and triple there you could literally tell him that he was letting off to slow down so that he had to go double 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 but nobody's going to go to that outside because of how just freaking just cement like again the track is so when a track gets this rough and this hard pack where look at that outside nobody is going to go there absolutely nobody is going to go there so the race line literally again here's just a inside one line deal you're only going to be able to pass somebody like what sexton tried to do a couple times do where you're just hauling ass down the inside on somebody and to make some sort of an aggressive pass but look at how the riders are staying from the far inside to the far outside damn i'm i'm sure talking a lot but i got a, a freaking a lot to a lot to say here. Craig, I really expected more out of Craig here. But oh, what I was talking about was the whole Fox Raceway thing. Like, they, there needs to be another round somewhere not in California. Yes, California is the mecca here. But they either need to make amends with Glen Helen, pay the damn track more, because everyone likes that track personally. I've only ridden it a, a, a few times, and, and I think it's kind of a dangerous track. Every time I've been there, it seems like somebody's died. <laughs> uh, but look at how he's on his toes, even kind of when he's breaking. I, I, that's one of the techniques that just seems, oh, he just shifted up right there. So he stayed in a higher gear going into that left-hander, and he's probably going to stay in that gear right there. And his teammate here, the smart move would be definitely just to let him over. You know, the whole let Brock buy is what that pit board said. <laughs> and he went wide. You could just literally tell. He just slowed the F down, let him right by. He did a good job. He didn't make it look like what Roxon did to Sexton last weekend where he literally looks over. You know, I mean, Marv has done that to Dungey and before. I mean, we've seen it a lot, but people don't think that there's a lot of, hey, look, now they're going to the fully going around the rut of where that is. They're not trying to hop out of there. Tomac clearing his vision a little bit, but look at how he's on his toes here. That's enabling his ankles to be more of some shock absorbers to fly over that stuff. I doubt he was hitting any brakes there to slow down. Dude, these guys have to be toast after the first moto here. What if Sexton gets to Tomac? And that's where the adrenaline kicks in, especially for the title fight, is they have to be incredibly precise. And somebody like Tomac, there, there's a, there's one of those sayings where you either use it or you lose it, right? And that's when it comes to that adrenaline or that fear, because that's when riders need to retire is as soon as they fear, oh, what did I, what was I saying about him overriding the track and just pushing it too hard? There he goes, he, he falls down by just breaking too hard and just losing traction because there's literally no traction. I mean, they, they might show another repay. They should. Oh, here we go. Yeah, look at he He's hauling ass, trying to go outside to inside. Really, yeah, 
yeah, just he wasn't on the gas. He was on the brakes. And look at how marbly, like, clay-like that is. Oh, but it almost looked like he lost. He wasn't even in the rut. The front wheel was over the rut. It was on the backside of a rut. So he had even less, uh, I want to say friction, but he had less surface area on the track with that front wheel. And so it just it gave away. Man, dude, but what a rider to be. Oh, he almost gave it away again there. To be crashing three times and you're only in fourth place with five seconds to go. You know, he, he really lost it the first moto. That's where the mojo was happening, and that's where, like, the, the dick measuring contest was, was the first moto to see who, who really is going to win the next one. I would really like to see Anderson not give it to Tomac here. I know in a previous interview he was suggesting that he w didn't want to stay with those guys. You know, he, he didn't want to get in the way of them. But I think right now he sort of thinks that the, the championship is probably over with. He's probably wanted to have some of his best finishes because these guys get paid for bonus money for podiums. Okay, I, I don't understand how overalls aren't really considered as well for like a tiebreaker or even in the points battle. Um, it's just about moto wins. And it, it's, I don't know, I, personally I think it, it should be changed, but I think differently than, you know, 99% of everybody. There's that Mark Twain quote that if you find yourself on the side of the majority, you should stop and reflect. That was a nice inside line, but both of them let off there. I really wish we had better 4K footage, you know, that the the production value of, you know, NBC, Mav TV, all these guys were able to kind of not share stuff in 720 for cable TV. They could actually have stuff that wasn't near as fuzzy. Yeah, Tomac's definitely going to get around him for sure. And how strong would Tomac be to go 1-1 for the finale, for his... Literally his first race of his career ever to be the only rider to win his first debut. And then the last race he is, is also win. I don't remember that first, if he just got the overall or if he went 1-1 there too. I'd have to look it up. But we want to talk about like Deegan and Chance Hymas with their little pro debuts. And, and it's like, dude, when you compare to him to like somebody like Tomac who won their pro debut, I think Stewart definitely got close. Uh, I believe uh, I did one of my live streams. I talked about this. I know um, Trey Kennard for Supercross won his pro debut too, but it was in Supercross. It wasn't in motocross. Uh, it just... That's why I feel like there's just a lot of hype on the amateur riders right now when the field of the professional riders are so thick. Oh, that was a nice outside. You can definitely tell you're feeling it when you're able to ride different lines. I, I just got done saying how one line this track was, but you know you're faster than somebody when you feel the confidence to be able to try different lines because you're not worried about losing time on the rider. You're just trying to not follow and get stuck another pace. Again, he finds another outside line. That was a poster move right there. Feet off the pegs. And Anderson is one of those riders where he's he's so tall but he always looks fluid. Even though he is complaining about his Kawasaki right now, the dude just looks smooth. He just looks smooth. And he's not one of the riders like AC. When I watch AC ride that same bike, he looks like he's trying really hard, where he's moving the bike a lot, and he's ex expelling a lot of energy, where when Jason Anderson rides, it, oh, shit, there was a... <laughs> uh, he overjumped that and got cross-rutted, and that bike just... Yeah, you knew he was going to potentially make the pass there. But is Anderson going to keep it WFO into the corner on the inside and not let him by? Not let him by? Tomac needs to watch out because if he falls down, he could lose the championship by just putting his ass on the ground. I don't think he'll potentially do anything like that because of the, the sheer fact that <laughs> it's Tomac. Oh, hey, look. Was that false neutral? Or is that a motorbike? Is the Kawasaki smoking again? Okay, all right. Yeah, okay. They're all saying it's neutral as well. But Anderson just seems as if he doesn't expel as much energy as, say, you know, an AC or somebody that is kind of the equivalent as far as body type. 
But no, this track looks awful with just the concrete conditions. And I would hate to fall down in this because that stuff is going to hurt. And most of these guys aren't really wearing uh, chest protectors, at least shoulder protection. They'll just wear probably a roos guard. But, dude, the, one of these, um, a track like this is something to where when these riders, just like Craig there, keeping all the feet on the pegs, is he doing that because he's tired or is he doing that because uh, it's it's easier, right? That's the new style right now. And, and I potentially, I think maybe it's kind of tired right now too because if you hit your one of your inside legs on one of those ruts it's going to instantly twist your knee and you're having a, a, a six months outage with um an acl repair sexton is a good rider to model after if you're wanting to improve because everything he does on the bike he just looks really powerful yeah i was making a joke that he was 225 but that's just because he puts the bike where he wants it to and, and truthfully like if you put him side by side to somebody like anderson anderson is you, you know he looks like uh a cyclist compared to sexton you know I, I know a lot of people say that sexton would make a really good cyclist but he would need to lose a shit ton of upper body weight because you know his legs are big enough but he's too big on his upper body he, he's got too much muscle mass but from racing motorcycles no it, it works perfect for him because he's able to get away with a lot of stuff with some of the mistakes. But I wonder what's going to happen with the Super Motocross next year with the extra $10 million, And I think Pro Motocross is given three plus an extra 30000 in, in purse. I don't know if it's per weekend or not, but I do know that um, the tracks are being charged. I believe, don't quote me, but I believe the, the tracks are being increased as far as the promoters having to, usually it's like a hundred grand to promote one of these races, but I'm guessing because of inflation and everything, it's kind of being passed on to the promoters that, uh, you know, at least the track owners. Yeah, look at how that outside line. It's, it's there. You can't be in the middle. It's either inside or outside on this track. I bet all these guys are happy that racing is over with. I'm pretty sure everybody that is from fifth and below are just waiting to either get lapped or <laughs> just for the the race to be over with but yeah watch him go from outside to inside yeah he just stood up relatively that entire he might actually get anderson this moto too Dude, these all look like speed bump curbs. It looks like there's just curbs everywhere as far as braking bumps go. Not, the track does not look like it's moving at all. But back to Tomac, dude. Just, you know, I, I've, I've made the joke that he's like on the spectrum. As far as, you know, he, he's probably one of those guys that is an introvert that doesn't want to be have a bunch of the attention but because of his talent oh he almost gave it away right there he dabbed his foot a little bit um and and guys in the comments let me know i still think that he's got a messed up knee i think he still has a messed up knee from supercross and i think that was one of the reasons why i was thinking he wasn't going to win the the championship this this year was because it's really hard to ride with something like that you know i mean i i, I wouldn't be surprised to honestly and i don't know why those guys aren't taking that inside they're going inside to outside there they're using way more track space or you know just area than just going inside to inside is there a giant wall there that we can't see to prevent them from doing that but i i, I digress uh just the back credit to tomac for just being so mentally tough to get through this stuff and maybe being an introvert helps you know because he's able to just tune everybody out and just do his own thing like you know when it counts he's able to and that's uh, uh, chad reed was one of the writers that talked a lot about that where he talked about the the sheer fact of when it counts that's when you're able to that's what creates a champion is when shit hits the fan, you're able to react to it rather than somebody that can just go out there and have a, a fast practice lap. It's like when the pressure's on, you're making it happen. And look what's right now between Sexton, who's the up-and-coming rider that people are betting big money on, at least, you know, HRC Honda for now, but everyone in the industry is wants that rider. He's probably got the hottest stock. 
And Tomac, unfortunately, he doesn't have the hottest stock right now because his it, 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 he's a, a, a time bomb just ticking. They're like, okay, cool. He's, he's won Supercross and Motocross this year. He's got the number one plate. He's going to go Supercross only. If he doesn't perfect this next Supercross series, his stock's going to drop dramatically because we've seen it time and time again that these riders, if they don't retire when they're on top, which, by the way, speaking of retirement, I believe the rider in 10th place, Dean Wilson, dude, he's been through so much. He's going to be a dad, so congratulations to him. <laughs> you know, he's probably, his whole life is, is changing right now. And I think he's having a little boy, you know, so congratulations to him. But he is retiring. He is no longer racing motorcycles, and I would love to see him still making content on YouTube, which I think he's going to because it's a revenue stream to where he can make that happen. And he's just a, a his personality suits being a influencer, you know, a creative person. Where Tomac, I don't know if he's ever going to have um, a video blog just because of his his personality i think he's a an introvert but for being a champion i think it works really well and maybe maybe when he retires he might do something but yeah look why aren't they going to the inside there is it just because it's too rocky but i would like to compare him to a crossfit champion by the name of matt frazier where he didn't have any cameras follow him or anything because he didn't want to show any sign of weakness because you locked people into this fear of you seem like this superhuman person that just has no faults, has no weakness. And I could definitely see Tomac doing that because he's a mystery. He's one of those guys that he can smile and say, fuck you at the same time. And you're not worried about, you know, like I believe he intimidates Barsha, where Barsha's not really intimidated by any fucker on the field because he's usually the one doing the pushing. Well, we haven't seen him do much pushing to Tomac because Tomac pushes back. But I, maybe when he retires, uh, he might show a little bit more side of him, and he might have actually a lot more personality than 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 what is what the general public or what people perceive him. You know, the fans. It's kind of a bummer to see how there's not that many fans on the side. Look at this. You know, there's that's not a lot of fans because it's hot here. And and again, I'm I'm one of those guys that's on the fence where I'm like. Could they have moved Friday up so that they could have qualified and this could have been in the morning for people so that you could potentially have more fans there and everyone because of the sheer fact that, you know, it gets hot? But, yeah, there's a lot of things involved with going to the races that somebody like Hopper isn't going to understand. You know, Coombs and I have had conversations about it, um, but there's a lot of logistics there that, I, I, I don't understand to make a race happen, you know, so you have to be, uh, you got to find a lot of who's to, to make stuff like this happen. But no, he's just in cruise control right now. And I don't think Tomac's one of those riders to where he's thinking like, hey, I just got three laps to go. I just got, th you know, three laps to go at this point, two laps to go. And then, you know, I get a cash, a, a couple million dollar check like with bonuses like what am i gonna do you know on my vacation like i'm gonna take my wife somewhere pretty you know we're gonna <laughs> you know maybe have another kid it's, it's, it's gonna be great you know maybe i'll even buy some bitcoin i don't think he's the type of person to do that because it's gonna be a lack of focus where a rider like sexton what did he do earlier in this moto you know he was in his head, at least my perception of it, you know, they will have to find out later on next week when he posts something on Instagram showing what actually happened there, because um, I could completely be wrong. But I'm still, I still feel as if these writers don't let you know because they want it to be a shadow. They they want to have an edge, and so if you're completely honest, especially with the media, you're losing your edge because you're giving away those secrets. And that's why uh, talking with the factory writers, you know, I did it a, a few years ago. I, I didn't enjoy it because it was it was I might as well just talk to a wall. Because uh, they're not going to tell you, you know, like generally, you know, especially as a, a privateer myself and the general population, they'd want to know the secret. Because again, you know, experience is best when it's not your own. You find a rider that knows how to jump a triple, you know, therefore he can teach you what gear he's in, the speed to go, you know, the technique. Is he dragging the rear brake? Is he tapping it? Is he clutching it? You know, is he just coasting off of it? Is he preloading it? You know, what's his body type on it? Well, what, what, what? Is his gearing for it, you know? What line is he taking to actually have it? Is he scrubbing? Is he whipping? You can learn so much from a rider that knows how to do something. 
So again, with a, the factory riders, you could a privateer could learn so much from how they actually uh, how they actually perform and and kind of give away those secrets. Oh, here they're they're showing his his first race here at Angtown. First career start and win. Do they show if it was a first or a second? And what will likely be the last pro motocross race of his career? Yeah, power to Tomac. Power to Tomac. Is, is he the new greatest of all time? Because he's having to deal with people that are also incredibly in their prime. You know, yeah, uh, RC did a couple straight series of never losing a moto. But at the same time, you, you're you on another level there. This is a guy that has been racing with people that are on the same level as him, and he's making it happen. He's had to come through adversity, even in Supercross, where he starts off slow. Like, I believe, if I look at his stats, even uh, at the beginning of this season, you know, he didn't get his first moto win until second moto of Hangtown on... Uh, is that, oh, that's 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 round two. Okay, <laughs> you know, forget I said anything. He got him out a win <laughs> at round two. Was it round two? Yeah, it was round two. Moto Moto two round two. Yeah. But even in Supercross, you know, he had to come through a lot. So and then him changing the Yamaha, I gave him a lot of shit for changing manufacturers because you've seen it so many times where people, especially top riders, they 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 change manufacturers and then it is a death kill for them. It's a it's a, a sentence. You know they're just dragging out the coffin. But he proved everybody wrong, which is what Tomac is in, ready to do. This guy might let. Uh, he might have even the most perfect, even a, excuse me, even a better perfect season by winning the Motocross of Nations. I, I do think that it's going to be an interesting team dynamic because I think uh, you got Sexton, who I, I, I've used the terminology of young, dumb, and full of cum, <laughs> you know, and it, but he's he's grown up. He, he's, he's maturing. And as a young man, is he, what, 22, 23 at this point? You know, he's won races, and this is the first season that he's really put in together a strong effort to potentially win the actual series. He's going to be the fan favorite, I believe, for Supercross and potentially Motocross next year. Uh, I, I wonder if his ego, because this, even though this is a singular, singular sport where the winner is the guy that gets all the meat and potatoes, it is a lot of people behind you that make the dynamic happen. And all these championships, personally, I think all these championships kind of have a, a hey, look at the fan. <laughs> Where, where's he? Where's the security guard there? <laughs> you jump on the fence and, and <laughs> uh, Tomek has got a lot of, a, a lot of really good fans. You know, what, what, uh, what somebody to aspire to be and, and somebody to be, to be like, is he married? Have they gotten married yet? Are they still a girlfriend? Ah, that's. That's that's his personal life there. You know, you don't we just need to focus on his on his racing. How much is he sweating? Does he look like he's dead? Or did he look like he was able to celebrating gets it done and he left everything out there is I could talk way more guys, but anyway, this was just a a spe special episode. And if you enjoy me rambling on with a couch racing SOB and you want to join in, you know, keep a WFO in the comments below and I'll try to do maybe more of these, you know, depending upon if I get copyright strike or whatever. But I appreciate every one of you guys, you know, till next time. And hats off to this gentleman, Tomac.